Hello and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we're continuing our Bible study. We are in the book of Isaiah. We're on the 26th chapter for this video and we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, as we begin, we will see that this is another chapter somewhat similar to the previous chapter where Isaiah is praising the Lord for all of his faithfulness and his wonderful works. So he begins with, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Okay? And again, this is the praising of Isaiah going forward. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in you. And hallelujah for the Lord doing that. I feel like a little tickle in my throat. Okay. <laughs> so though uh so thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in you, O Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he brings down them that dwell on high. The lofty city, he lays it low. He lays it low, even to the ground. He brings it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright does weigh the path of the just. Now, even as he says here in verse uh, verse 5, thou brings down them that dwell on height. That was just said also. Uh, he was saying that in the, the previous chapter in reference to Moab and their pride and him bringing them down because of their pride. Okay, and he goes on to say, the way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright does weigh the path of the just. Yes, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. For the desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired you in the night. Yes, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Now again, this is Isaiah because he's not only uh, in the mix of this, seeing all of this going forward, God's wrath going forward and the people being afflicted. And... Uh, destroyed because of their rebellion so then he's going to also see what takes place afterwards and he's no doubt going to see those coming to alignment with God so he says let favor be showed to the wicked yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord Lord when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yes, the fire of thine enemy shall devour them. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. O Lord, our God, other lords beside thee have laid dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. Hallelujah. Now they now this is Isaiah getting ready to talk about other gods also, okay? Because he's going other lords beside thee have had dominion over us, okay? So in Jerusalem and even over in Babylon, they there were other gods that did uh, have dominion over them. He says, but they are dead because after the destruction of the God went forward with his judgment, he killed all of that. They shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them, and made all their memory to perish. For thou hast increased the nation, O Lord. Now, since all of that, the nation is increased. And he's speaking of the nation of God, okay? Because, again, once all of the judgment goes forward, people begin to see that this God is real, he doesn't play. So, <laughs> they come into alignment with him. And so, uh, that increases the nation, okay? So he says, Thou hast increased the nation, thou art glorified, thou hast removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Lord, and trouble have they visited thee. 
they poured out a prayer when they when you chased time when your chastening was upon them who would okay <laughs> okay they were experiencing chastising and so they prayed so like as a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery it is in pain and cries out in her pains so have we been in the in thy sight O lord but we've been with child we've been in pain we have as it were brought forth wind we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen for the for the, thy dead men shall live together with thy dead body shall they arise awake and sing you that dwell in the dust for thy dew is as the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead and he's still encouraging those that are down and out as he says in the dust still go forward singing and praises singing and praising god because nevertheless he is our god no matter what and um he is definitely worthy of our praise that's what we are here for verse 20 come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation is gone for behold the lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain okay and that just speaks of and uh, he throws in because of all of the judgment that god went forward in the earth with and uh, because of their rebellion and how it made things different and it changed very quickly okay verse 20 verse 20 out of the same chapter let's go back to that come my people enter thou into my chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation is passed over from thee okay from this Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 12 was this recorded previously because as stated in let me see where's that verse 20 was it 20 verse 20 yeah Oh, I'm sorry, verse 21. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place <clears throat> to, uh, uh, to, uh, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So then again, I'm led over to Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 12, where it says, And the harp and the vial, the tabret and the pipe and the wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord neither consider the operation of his hands okay so they that's another reason in reference to uh the going forward of the judgment how the people disregard the movement of the lord and what he was doing and so, as far as sending jeremiah and all of the other prophets that went before them to actually forewarn them they disregarded that and then another scripture I'm led over into is Isaiah 14, where God tells us that he will rise up against those and tells and told them, the children of Israel at that moment in time also, uh, chapter 14, verse 22, for I will rise up against them, said the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, says the Lord. And I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the bosom of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. When he gets done with that in Babylon, it will only be a pool of water. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's going to be it pretty much for this chapter and this yeah for this chapter because again this was Isaiah just wanting to go forward with praising God <clears throat> in reference to all his 
amazing saving grace that was applied to those that did repent whenever uh, the prophet went forward telling them, forewarning them that God was coming with his judgment for them to repent and, and the things that he had purposed and planned for them because he says, I know the thoughts I have prepared for you. Thoughts of good, you know. He had a good vision for them under the king of Babylon, but nevertheless the king of Babylon changed up, of course, and we saw that in the book of Daniel whenever he decided to make himself try to make himself a God over the children of Israel and therefore cause friction between him and God. And so therefore, but it was all a part of God's plan for salvation for all of them, you know, and it's just so wonderful how God puts it all together in order to save that which he wants to save and get the message to an individual. All right, God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward. Looking at the prophetic ministry, we are uh, looking at, Jer we've already read the book of Jeremiah, now we're reading the book of Isaiah, then we're going to go into the book of Ezekiel, and then we're going to go into the book of Hosea. We're looking at four prophets in the Old Testament that God used in the prophetic ministry to display his heart. Any message that he wanted to say to the people, maybe in reference to, not only verbally, but physically, if he wanted to demonstrate it, however, and at times it was a demonstration. So we're taking a look at that from the Old Testament, and that's when it's basically used. And today, we see it going forward in the earth, not the same way uh, illustrated, but it still does go forward, okay? Because it's, a, it's prophetic, and God is prophetic, okay? And everything about him is prophetic. He's prophet, prophecy. So he is um, the prophetic ministry, <laughs> okay? And so therefore... Um, that's what we're taking a look at right now at the prophetic ministry series that includes those four prophets from the Old Testament and how it relates to us today as saints of God in the kingdom and how we use that from within ourselves and how God uses us through that particular uh, office. Each one of us, because again, as I can't and I can't express this, uh, you know, more and more on this channel that. We're all prophets in the kingdom of God, okay? Because once you have been birthed into the kingdom, you've, you've been predestined if you come into the kingdom, okay? It's a predestined, you see? It's predestined uh, ordinance by heaven. So the individual comes into the kingdom. If you're predestined, let's think about it like this if you can't make the connection. Because if you're predestined, then that means that God has already spoken that you should come, okay? You should be a part of this kingdom. And, what, and so that's a prophecy. And so if you're predestined, that's prophecy. You've, you've already, been, he's prophesied for you to be. He's already purposed and planned for you to be a part of his kingdom. Okay, so therefore, all are prophets in the kingdom of God. Okay, God bless you. God be with you. And I'll see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.